Okay, welcome back everyone. Hopefully uh, another good day of writing coming your way. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, we are at the, um, we've just introduced this uh, fight scene. Um, we, we left off the last page with uh, this big MC, this big larger than life character wearing the purple blazer. He comes in and he says, and he, he just starts the fight, right? Our guy is trapped in this uh, fighting ring. He's surrounded by, um, you know, a big crowd of Yakuza gangsters. And he's staring down a really big opponent, a 250 pound opponent. And our protagonist, he is not any kind of fighter. So the question is, how is he going to survive? And that is what we're going to find out today. Um... So let's perhaps just, uh, let's read through just what we did yesterday and then, uh, and then we'll go straight into it today. So, um, right, so our guy starts in the shipping container, right? So he grabbed my arm fast and hauled me out of the shipping container into the shipping yard. The night was chilly and the salt air stung my cheeks. He hustled me between a row of shipping containers, made a quick right turn, and then we were suddenly in the middle of it. A giant hexagonal shaped clearing, bound on each side by hundreds of shipping containers, stacked a hundred meters high. Flood lighting had been set up all around, illuminating hundreds of Yakuza gangsters and seven fighting pits. It was like a coliseum. The crowd roared as we emerged onto the scene. I stood there stunned, blinking into the bright lights and hodgepodge of screaming faces. I felt my legs take a step back on instinct, but then my body got launched forward by a kick to my backside, and I fell flat into the pit. I think by a hard kick. By a hard kick to my backside, and I fell flat into the pit. I wanted to stay down like that, let it be over. I heard a voice not unlike Sabrina's tell me. There should be a butt here. But I couldn't stay down. Uh, let's just put reason. Okay. Uh, something like that. that just, there, there just needs to be something more there. Okay. I got up slowly. My eyes had adjusted to the light now. I saw the big enforcer guy waiting for me. Evidently, he'd won all the fights before, which by my count was 12. Um, he'd won all the fights since... Um, He'd been uh, taken out of the shipping container. Okay. Uh, which by my count was 12. He looked tired at least, bleeding from his chest and the side of his head. If I could get some blood and dirt into his eye, that wouldn't be the worst thing. <clears throat> uh, a parked hydraulic forklift, painted with the number 6, held multiple cameras above our pit. The feeds went to the 50 or so huge monitors mounted all around the clearing. They displayed all the information and statistics, as well as all the betting odds. Yosha, boomed a loud voice as a guy with an Elvis hairdo and sparkly purple blazer jumped into the pit. Are you ready for more? The crowd around us roared that they did want more. He pointed and laughed. That's good. Let's just make that purple blazer. Purple Blazer pointed and laughed and made a joke about me being a little white rabbit. The crowd seemed to enjoy it, and my opponent snorted the same sentiment. By your leave, my lord, said Purple Blazer, looking towards the outskirts of the hexagon where I saw that a few of the shipping containers had been converted into private viewing boxes. I caught a glimpse of either Kyori or Mizuki, but before I could think any further, Purple Blazer had started the fight and the big enforcer guy was coming towards me. Okay, so we need to trim something down here. I think probably that line. Um, okay, so that's where we left off yesterday, and today we are gonna start writing uh, from here. So, um, remember, our guy is not a fighter. Uh, that's probably a good first line. Remember, we wanna think that this is the first page of a novel, um, always, you know, compelling first line, compelling last line, stitch it together, that's our process. So let's let's do that. Let's just do something as simple as that. Um, okay. So you know, I mean, 
he's not like you know a weak kind of person or anything it's not it's not like he's like an invalid um so you know i'm not sickly or weak or anything i'm just um not a good uh fighter you know never have been it's that conversational tone that uh, we need because that's in keeping with what we've done uh, in the past. Uh, so you know, maybe he can. Oh, maybe this is a chance to actually go back into his uh, into his backstory. Uh, you know, maybe he's at, like at school, for instance, right? All the way um, back to when I was at school. Hello to everyone just joining in the chat. Great to have you here. Um, not. When I was getting into fights at school, maybe. But getting into uh, fights in the schoolyard. Mm. And this is the this is that technique, this um, this type of construction of a paragraph which we've talked about before, um, which is where you can just you shove in an anecdote, a very small anecdote rather than a whole bunch of description, just a very small anecdote, and that just gets the the point across. So here we need something like, you know, one of the other boys um, would make... Uh, so we can imagine our protagonist was maybe poor, or, you know, didn't come from a, a very uh, wealthy home, but instead of saying all that, maybe we'll just say um, about my shoes, you know, the scruffy shoes, whatever, something like that. Uh, I'd retort... Um, with a line about uh, his um, okay, brain, for lack of a better word. You know, he's just going to challenge the other guy's intelligence. That obviously isn't the best line. Um, you know, and then I'd be coming to um, in the nurse's office. Hmm. So remember, our guy's from England, he's from London, so maybe he went to a really quite a rough boarding school um, and he wasn't, he never really learned to fight, he was always just beaten up. Um, in fact, what we could do, maybe maybe we go a little bit... Um, uh, wits... Yeah, like something like... Let's make this nurse, like, uh, maybe she was one of, a, like, a big influence in his life, maybe... Because our guy, he has a problem with women in general, we've seen, but he's he's not afraid to talk to them. Uh, he's got he's got some personality with them, so maybe um, maybe this was like the only woman he got on with, uh, something like that. I don't know. I'm just spitballing here. Wits over fists. Um, uh, what do they call them in the old? Is it matrons? I think it's matrons. Matron, uh, random name, Bianca, um, used to tell me. Is that right? You, I think you call them matrons, right? When you're in school, the nurses. Uh, and often too. Uh, I got beat up, um, let's say a couple of times a week. So we see that this hard, this hard boiled character of ours really he didn't start off hard-boiled, I guess nobody does. Um, so it's just these sort of little bits here that we can use to flesh out the character. And that said, uh, Matron Bianca is a good looking nurse. All right, we'll just leave it at that. We don't need to go further, I don't think. Uh, so, you know, I'm not a good fighter. I'm not sickly or weak or anything. I'm just not a good fighter. Never have been. All the way back to when I was getting into fights in the schoolyard. One of the other boys would make a comment about my shoes. I'd retort with a line about his brain, something like that. And then I'd be coming into and then I'd be coming to in the nurse's office 30 minutes later. Wits over fists, Ma matron Bianca used to tell me approvingly. Often too. I got beat up a couple of times a week. That said, Matron Bianca was a good looking nurse. So you know he wasn't it wasn't all bad. Um, okay, now we need to transition back to reality. So the guy, easy line here is um, the guy coming at me was less so, as in less good looking. Um, 
So let's make him a big guy. So we know he's, he's one of these enforcer characters, 200 uh, and, uh, you know, 50 pounds. Uh, uh, we don't need the last thing, do we? Okay, 250 pounds, you know, with, you know, uh, legs for arms and, you know, just like no neck and no, um, no visible neck. Um, okay, so we're building this guy up to be, you know, pretty much a fortress who needs to be taken down. Uh, and we need to see how our guy's going to do that. Um, probably, uh, so, he, okay, something like I remembered... Uh, so we've talked about this a lot as well. Um, I feel that this is what I'm about to do. Um, we talked about always being self-referential in your novel, right? Instead of having outside um, uh, references, always try and reference what's come before. Now, we've already seen a few fight scenes in this novel, specifically one with um, Mizuki Matsumoto and her student at the dojo, right? Back at the dojo a few chapters ago, we saw a big fight scene, so I'm thinking probably our guy, he's uh, he's he's remembering that this is a this is a very David and Goliath fight it seems at the moment, uh, and so was that fight. So um, probably there's a there's a there's a nice way to link the two. Uh, so let's try and do that. Um, Mizuki Matsumoto uh, fighting against that student. Uh, in the dojo and she had just destroyed him right so um, she was she's not Mizuki Matsumoto is not a big person um, she's quite petite she's missing ah so uh, okay so we can say that you know um, he'd had at least uh, 50 pounds uh, 50 pounds on her you know, not to mention, because remember, Mizuki is missing a hand, right? Not to mention um, an extra hand. And yet, um, she'd beaten him all the same. Okay. Um, right, but, you know, I was not Mizuki Matsumoto. Um, you know, I hadn't spent, uh, I hadn't spent 10 years training, um, at the Okami fighting school. But I had learned a thing or two since uh, uh, since the playground, I guess. Uh, like anatomy, yeah, that's a good line. So sometimes the, the lines just flow. You you just sort of um, there's this. The reason I like that little bit is just that it's. We were talking about the nurse uh, before, and now, you know, anatomy is very suggestive, right? Like anatomy, as if, you know, he's learned he's learned a little bit about um, about the body, and uh, that has both some, um, you know, physical fighting. Um, uh, you know, that that's good for fighting, and it's also good for some other things. And let's just leave it at that. Um, so, like anatomy. Uh, so now we need to think, how is this guy going to uh, use, you know, take down this big bruiser? So, well, I mean, the way I think about it is, um, and again, you can, I, I'm just thinking about all the fight scenes that I've read in the past. Usually, if you have a big guy, in fact, I had one of these scenes in my first book. If you have a really big guy against, a, you know, a smaller guy, then the smaller guy really has to focus on the, the weak points in the in the big structure right so uh, those would be the knees uh, the groin the eyes the ankles though the elbows the, those kind of those kind of parts of your body do not uh, do not have muscle it doesn't matter how big your muscles get the joints themselves do not grow any bigger so 
you, the smaller guy, if he's going to win, he really has to attack uh, at those uh, the weak points in the structure. So probably our guy is going to have to do the same thing. Um, uh, I think... Okay, so he's... Let's think about this. He He's from London. Uh, he grew up in a rough and tumble boarding school. Um, what's he seen that is going to influence that? Probably something like... Okay, so in England we play football, real football, as in with our feet, as in soccer for you Americans. Um, not that I, I don't have any problem with American football, except that it's called football. Um, but yeah... So the thing that, you know, we always have uh, shin guards. If you're, if you're playing, if you're playing uh, football, you, you, you wear shin guards to protect your shin because the shin, um, if you get kicked in the shin, there's, I think there's a big nerve there. Uh, I'm not sure what the nerve is called. There's a big nerve there, um, or maybe two nerves actually, that run up the shin. Um, perineal, I think is the word. Perineal nerve, um, if my anatomy hasn't failed me. But... Uh, and that's sort of part of the sciatic nerve. Basically, if you get kicked there, you do, you're on the floor, you're going to be in serious pain. And the shins too, they don't, you know, it's, it's hard to build a lot of muscle on your shin. Um, you know, you don't see many bodybuilders um, flexing their shins for, uh, for you know, it, on stage. It's not, it's not that kind of thing. So I'm thinking probably our guy, his whole strategy for this first fight, simple as it might be, um, is kick the guy hard in the shins, get a good good shin, you know, he's playing dirty a bit, it's a bit of a dirty move, but, you know, he's a small guy, he's, he's got broken ribs, what else is he going to do, he's, it's life or death here. Um, so, let me just check what the, um, okay, you're not supposed to do research, but, while you're writing, but let me just, um, let me just see this, uh, is it perineal? Uh, what is the nerve in the shin? Just going on uh, Google, just typing this in. Let's see. Two large nerves that run through the shin are the tibial and common perineal. Perfect. Okay. So, not bad. Well done, me. Uh, perineal. All right. Let's, let's, let's do that. This is a very sort of, uh, you know, Lee Child way of, do it, you know, approaching a fight scene, we're really breaking down the construction um, of the fight. Uh, so let's, the, no, not perennial, not perennial, peroneal. The perennial nerve, um, for example, uh, runs straight up the shin and uh, comes part of the larger sciatic nerve. Uh, and the sciatic nerve runs up the entire uh, backside of the body. Um, okay, uh, so let's say you know, you know, undue pressure uh, to this nerve can cause serious uh, discomfort uh, if not if not or even uh, no if not uh, you know temporary paralysis should we put something about um, But I had learned a thing or two since the playground. Maybe, um, maybe it's not since the playground, but from my time on the playground. Let me put this in brackets. So what I want to say is, um, uh, he learned this, you know, sort of in playing football at school. He. Um, you know, uh, kids would get kicked in the shins and they were told, bring your shin protector next time because, uh, uh, and he learned the anatomy from there. He learned that there's a perineal nerve and if you get kicked in the nerve, in that nerve, you're, you're going to shut down uh, and you're rolling around on the pitch. Um, 
I mean, you know, it's not a prerequisite to uh, to rolling around on the pitch, uh, on the football pitch. You don't have to be kicked in the shin. Um, just watch the Premier League, and uh, that should become quite obvious. Um, but enough of that. Okay, so let's we'll come back to that. I think so. Uh, what I want to say is that I, I like that bodybuilding thing that we said before. So clearly, um, you know, clearly my two hundred and fifty pounds. Let me just take that bit. Can't be bothered typing this. Uh, oh, not like that. Like that. Okay. Clearly, my two hundred and fifty pound uh, opponent was a uh, was a gym rat. You know, chest on. You know, chest on Monday. Uh, quads on. Friday, um, but shins on Tuesday, you know, I didn't think so. Okay. Um, so we have a, we have a decision to make here. Either we do a, a sort of a play by play of the fight as in he approached me, you know, he punched, I slipped the punch, you know, I dodged to the left, he did, you know, we could, we could do that. But our guy is not a fighter. So I don't think we, we, I don't think it fits the, 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 the story so far. It doesn't, it's not so in keeping with his sort of terse commentary. So... I think probably the, when he's fighting, um, it's a bit more, it's a bit more off screen, right? We we want to just jump back in. He's, I don't think it's that. So what I mean is this: uh, it's hard to explain, but instead of writing a play by play, um, we'll we'll sort of cut from one thing to the next, and um, and just make a witty comment about it. So something like you know, turns out I was right. Um, Turns out I was right, you know, because um, about three seconds after, you know, he'd slapped his, uh, his his meaty hands, let's say. Again, just referencing the fact that this guy's huge. His meaty hands, you know, on my shoulders. Um, uh, he was rolling around the ground no he was rolling on the ground uh on the ground uh okay uh you know like i'm thinking of a fish out of water but i'm not going to use fish out of water so uh, like a salmon um trying to get a uh a suntan i don't know if that even makes sense but whatever um okay i gave him a Or another okay so uh, okay have to be careful here so our guy is English but probably the majority of my readership is American certainly it was for my first book so do I have to put soccer kick or can I put a uh, you know a football kick uh, that's interesting that's a question that's something that's where my editor can make her money right is telling me what to do with that so another soccer kick um, to the, uh, to the head, and he went uh, fairly quiet. Uh, probably, uh, and uh, you know, so did the crowd, right? We can imagine, you know, um, I think we said this before, actually, that um, you know, no one is going to be betting on our protagonist, right? He's the weak guy. He knows he's not a fighter. He's definitely not a fighter. He's got broken ribs, you know, a bruised eye. He's been thrown into this ring with a huge opponent who's won 12 fights before, um, obviously the crowd is just going to be a bit stunned by this, like, what, what the hell just happened? What? Is this real? You know, they're going to be a bit, a bit like that. Um, so not a lot of people uh, betting on me. Okay, so again, I'm just trying to get through this page quickly. Got a few lines left. Um, so 
we sort of have this moment of stunned silence and then um, and then let's bring that guy with the MC, the purple blazer. Uh, he comes back on, you know, can you believe it? This 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 little guy can fight. Uh, it's, yeah, okay, actually, let's do something like that. That's it's not terrible. It's not great. And remember, all of this um, all of this we want to put in uh, into into phonetic Japanese, um, since you know these guys probably are only going to be speaking Japanese. Um, so we'll we'll do that later. You know, in in the next edit, uh, jumping you know back. Uh, into the pit. Um, I like the fact that we keep using this, uh, the rabbit, right? We've, we keep using the word rabbit throughout this book. You know, he has the rabbit's foot. Um, there was that story about the tanuki, the farmer and the rabbit. He was a rabbit and wolves. Uh, there was the rabbit and wolves in the dojo. And now again, this guy, I'm wondering if potentially uh, this might help us get out of the problem we had on page one, the first line of this novel, um, which promised something huge. Um, you know, we need to deliver on that, and we still don't have any idea what that's going to be. Remember, the first line of this novel was, uh, I'm going to tell you a story which you'll believe, and then I'll tell you the truth which you won't. Now, we need to figure out what the hell that means. Uh, and pretty soon, because, you know, this is sort of one of our climax scenes. So uh, something, some twist has got to come into play uh, soon. Um, okay, so um, what's happening now? So the fight has just ended, basically, with our guy taking down his opponent. Uh, I'm just thinking how to get to the next part as quickly as possible. Remember, we don't want to, uh, we don't want to waffle. We don't have a word count. We've not got Penguin Random House, you know, breathing down our neck about this book. So we can afford to be quick um, and skip out the boring parts. So probably another fight is going to start pretty instantly. Um, so maybe we can just write that. So my next uh, opponent, uh, you know, came out. Okay, so that, that's probably like the last, the very last line. Remember, we want a very compelling last line on the end of each page. That's been our process so far uh, in order to force the reader to turn the page. So, um, okay, so maybe what's happened is, okay, so you've got this opponent lying on the ground. Maybe two other guys, you know, or three other guys even have to sort of drag him away and, um, you know, sort of the crowd parts as they drag this guy into the distance, obviously he is not going to be, uh, he's not going to survive. He might only be unconscious, but this is Yakuza. The whole point of these fights was to allow the winner to regain his former status in the, uh, you know, in the Yakuza. And I guess the losers are all probably just killed, right? So, uh, and since we're in the shipping yard, maybe we can have one of these shipping containers just full of, you know, full of bodies, full of unconscious bodies, from all the fights that are going on, the losers just get piled in the shipping container and probably, uh, you know, stored away on this massive shipping yard um, for time to come. So that, uh, let's do that. Um, let's say it took uh, t it took three guys um, to um, to drag away uh, my opponent. You know, the crowds. What did we say? The crowd parted. For them and uh, in the distance I saw another shipping container you know filled with um, unconscious you know filled with unconscious bodies uh, and you know maybe we can um, maybe we can explore that a little bit later in the scene um, uh, unconscious bodies okay now, how do we just stitch up this bit to the very last line? Uh, my next opponent came out. So it took three guys to drag away my opponent. The crowd parted for them. And in the distance, I saw another shipping container filled with unconscious bodies. Um, by the time the crowd had closed in, it closed, closed in or closed up again? 
Uh, oh, oh, okay. Um, but I didn't have um, much time to uh, contemplate that. Um, because uh, my next component suddenly came out. Something like that. Okay, I think that would work. Uh, let's see if this fits on one page. Come on. Yeah. Okay, that's that's a page of writing. Uh, okay, let's read it through, see if today's work uh, even has any sort of, uh, you know, if it, if it holds together. So remember, when, when we're reading through, our whole thing is, if this was the first page of a novel, would it draw you in as a reader? If every page does that, you've got to, you must have written a page turner. We must have written a good book. Um, so let's see. I am not a good fighter. I'm not sickly or weak or anything. I'm just not a good fighter. Never have been. All the way back to when I was getting into fights in the schoolyard. One of the other boys would make a comment about my shoes. I'd retort with a line about his brain. Okay, what's that word? And then I'd be coming into the I'd be coming to in the nurse's office thirty minutes later. Wits over fists, Matron Bianca used to tell me approvingly. Often too. I got beat up a couple of times a week. That said, Matron Bianca was a good looking nurse. The guy coming at me was less so. 250 pounds with legs for arms and no visible neck. I remembered Mizuki Matsumoto fighting against that student in the dojo. He'd had at least 50 pounds on her, not to mention an extra hand, and yet she'd beaten him all the same. I was not Mizuki Matsumoto. I hadn't spent 10 years training at the Okami Fighting School, but I had learned a, th but I had learned a thing or two from my time on the uh, yeah from my time on the playground. Uh, like anatomy, the perineal nerve, for example, runs straight up the shin and becomes part of the larger sciatic nerve, which runs up the entire backside of the body. Undue pressure to this nerve can cause serious discomfort, if not temporary paralysis. Clearly, my 250-pound opponent was a gym rat. Chest on Monday, quads on Friday. But chins on Tuesday? I didn't think so. Turns out I was right, because about three seconds after he'd slapped his meaty hands on my shoulders, he was rolling on the ground like a salmon trying to get a suntan. I gave him another soccer kick to the head, and he went fairly quiet. So did the crowd. Not a lot of people betting on me. Can you believe it? Purple Blazer jumping back into the pit. Um, let's say... Shouted Purple Blazer, jumping back into the pit. This little rabbit can fight. It took three guys to drag away my opponent. The crowd parted for them and in the distance, I saw another shipping container filled with unconscious bodies. But I didn't have much time to contemplate that because my next opponent um, suddenly came out. But I didn't have uh, any time to contemplate that because my next opponent uh, had suddenly come out. Something like that, whatever. Um, okay, not bad. We need, we need to just make one, one thing uh, different. But I had learned a thing or two from my time... Um, from my time on the playground. Uh, from my time, maybe it's from time playing football. In the playground or on the playground? Yes, it's something like that. Um, that's basically it, and we just need, you know, all these witty one liners, you know, um, you can't. It's, it's very hard to think of them uh, as you are writing, but you know now that this is in the in the unconscious, the unconscious will, uh, I'm sure, uh, 
you know, let, let me know a good line um, soon and I can always come back and fill it in later. Okay, but there we go. That's um, that's the next part. I think that reads, you know, okay. Um, certainly room for improvement, but for a first draft, I think that's pretty good. Um, okay, so now our guy is going to go into tomorrow, uh, the second opponent um, from the shipping container, and uh, he's going to have to deal with that. And I think this is the fight. You know, he, he's won the first fight, you know, but the second fight, this is the one where he's going to lose. And uh, this is where the ex-wife is going to step in, uh, finally make her, you know, reveal herself. This is what we've been building up to the whole time. Um, so finally, we're going to meet this ex-wife character. Um, so hopefully that's at the end of page two tomorrow. Um, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, okay, so I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed today's stream. Uh, any uh, questions, comments, please do... Uh, you know, put them in the chat or uh, whisper them to me. Uh, please do like and subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel right before your eyes. It's got all the old videos uh, so you can watch uh, how we uh, constructed this novel from scratch and are still making our way through it, uh, you know, blindly. Um, so please do check that out if you, if you find that interesting. Uh, if you're a writer, let us know. Send in some work. Let's put it on the big screen. Share it with each other. Try and help each other get better as storytellers. I will see you guys tomorrow, same time, same place, where I will continue to write before your eyes.